Hi, my name is Paul and I am the lead research technician here at the Ohio Linux Research Labs and I'm also the administrator of the Pop! OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. Uh, today's video I'm going to show you how to install no, the No Machine Remote Desktop program on Pop! OS Linux 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here's my pop installation here. And here's my NeoFetch to prove that I'm actually in a pop session here. Pop 2204, okay? So, I'm going to install no machine, remote desktop, client, and server on here. Then I'm going to use the client, the client part of it, to connect to a no machine uh, server running on my Fedora Linux installation on a different machine. Okay, so I'm not going to deal with um, installing uh, no machine via snaps or flat packs or compiling from source or app image. And I'm not going to use any of the pop repositories. I'm going to go directly to the uh, no machine page and see what they have there. And I believe all they have there, don't know if they have an actual uh, repo PPA I can add, but I'm going to go ahead and just download whatever's on there. I do believe it's only going to be a standalone .deb file which may or may not install, which may or may not add um, a URL to our sources list anyway, but we'll check that once we're all done. Okay, so let's check a couple of things first. First I want to show you I don't actually have it installed already and when we're done we'll come back here and we'll see that it actually did install because of my um, because of the steps I just took in this video. So you can see here there's no no machine here so what N right? So it would be in here somewhere. N H I J K L and so it would be in here somewhere. As you can see it's not here. When we're done, we'll come back here and look at it and we'll try to launch it from here and from the terminal as well. Okay, so we got that out of the way. And what else was I gonna I was gonna talk about something else here. Um I think that was really about it. So we'll come back in once we're done. Okay, so we'll go to the page here. Oh yeah, I know what I was going to check. Um, pop open the pop shop here, and we'll check the repo manager, and we'll see uh, uh, what's in there now. There should be no no machine entry, and then after I use apt to install the deb file, let's see if it actually adds any kind of a repo URL to the um, to the sources list. Okay, so let um, let Pop Shop do its gyrations here real quick, and once it's done here shortly, then I can go ahead and move on. Okay, just about done. Okay, done. Okay, now I'm going to go up to the hamburger menu here. System software sources. This is going to give us a repo manager. See repo manager here. Go to extra sources. Let's count how many we have here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and there's no no machine entries here. <clears throat> so once I'm done, we'll come back here and see if there's been anything added to our sources list. Okay, so we're all staged up there. Okay, so we're all ready to go. We're gonna go to the no machine page here. Okay, this is the home page, and there's not much to really um, fish around for at this point. Pretty straightforward here. Download now Linux version 8.11.3. Uh, okay, good. Click on that. Take us to the next screen here. Okay. There's a couple things here to look at here. Now I'm not going to use. I'm going to use this right down here, 64-bit uh, down here. I'm, I'm going to forget these three here which I do believe would be for 32-bit uh, CPUs so I'm on a 64-bit system so I'm going to just focus on down here now I'm going to skip the first one that's RPM that's for Red Hat based uh, disk rows I'm not going to um, download a tar file and run it that way I'm just going to download their standalone dev file here and install uh, no machine by their dev file with APT and I don't see um, any kind of a official PPA repo URL or anything like that so we're just gonna go this route here okay so your system probably might be a little different 
as far as the CPU, probably it's still going to be the same thing, 64. And you want Deb since we're on pop. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, download. So we click on that. It doesn't actually download it yet. It's kind of brings it to this next staging screen here. And it's got a little bit of a summary. Okay, we know it's um, the version is what we want. Uh, the, you know, the 53 megabytes of the size of the download. Okay, that's fine. A download size. A dev file. Okay, fine. Okay, we're all looking good here. And there's some instructions here. Okay. So first, let's download the dev file. Come over here. Open that into a separate window here so we can get um, the progress report. Okay, it's only 53 megabytes, so by the time I'm done talking here, it should be, um, it should complete pretty quickly. Not a very big download, 50 megabytes. Okay, we're about halfway through here. Everything looks like it's going pretty good. And then once it's done downloaded, we'll spot it in our download folder and verify that it actually has been downloaded and saved into our file system so we can work with it. Okay, good. Okay, we're good there. No errors. Okay, looks good here. I don't want to click on show in folder. That's too easy. I want to do things the, the Linux way. So I'm going to X that out. Minimize the browser. Come back to the terminal. Clear on that. Download into the CD, uh, CD into the download folder. Clear again. And see if we can spot it here. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Here it is. No machine. 8.11.3 underscore 4. AMD 64 dot deb. Okay, good. There, there it is. Okay. I've done this before a lot of times, but if you get a little bit lost, you can come down here and it says to use D package. I'm going to use APT. I don't want to use D package. I'm going to, you can use that. It might have a problem with dependency resolution and it might not put um, any kind of a repo URL or whatever into your sources list. So I'm going to go ahead and forego D package. So I'm just going to use APT here instead. Okay. And then we'll come back here if we need to. Otherwise, I, I've done it before and I should be able to get by without um, referring back here anymore. Okay. So we'll minimize on that. And then when I key in the, the, the syntax command for uh, APT to install no machine via their dev file there. Okay, so it'll be a dot slash. I'm gonna key the word, I'm gonna key the character N and um, tab over. And since there's no other N's in there, it just auto completes everything in one swoop. So N, tab, okay, good. So this is what I'm gonna use here to install no machine. Pseudo APT install. No uh, dot slash, no machine, the version, the CPU architecture, and it's a dot deb installer. Okay, good. I'm all staged up here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit enter, and I'm going to go ahead and um, start the installation process with APT. Let's see what happens. Okay. Looks like it's downloading. I'm not sure if it's actually downloading anything or if it's just installing it. Okay. Everything looks pretty good. I think it's almost done here. I've seen this before. It doesn't take too long. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. We did the we did the dot slash up here, and it went through some processes here, and it's going to install no machine. I don't know if there was any um, dependencies. doesn't look like it, actually. Okay, set up um, the servers, the runtime and everything, client, server, 
and it's running on this port here, the server is. So in case other no machine clients want to um, connect, they can find it on this port here on this local host. And this is good. This is a little bit of information here. I don't think it's anything bad. Uh, it, I don't think it, it, it's going to crash the installation. Okay, so I think we're all installed there. Okay, so it should be installed at this point. Very simple. And I come over over here, and I don't think we need to do any, I don't need to do uh, any any more re uh, referring to what to the instructions here. I'm pretty good here, I do believe. Okay. So it's installed. All we have to do is go ahead and launch them now. Now we're going to do it the GUI method here, and then we'll also try it from the terminal as well. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, these two are new. Well, before I forget, let's check the repo manager one more time. See if there's any, been anything new added to extra sources here. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it did not add a, a repo URL here. Okay, so I've seen it before where that has happened with a, a standalone dev file as opposed to, you know, going through the, the standard process of adding a key and downloading the repo and adding it manually and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes just a, a standalone dev file actually does the same thing. In this case, it didn't actually add anything to it. So if there's new versions, I do believe that the No Machine client will actually update itself. So you'd probably, I guess you don't really need to have, um, you don't have to worry about downloading the dev file each time or uh, whether it added it. Uh, this this you know the repo URL to the sources list it it's um self updating okay okay so yeah that's right it's self updates so you don't have to worry about all the other things there so we're pretty much good to go forward here into the future and it'll just keep updating itself not a lot of maintenance you know okay so or not not a lot of uh you don't have to like download the dev file again and or worry about uh your your sources list being messed up by a bad repo URL or whatever. It just kind of upgrades itself in place. Okay, so here's the service. I'm not going to run that. That's only if other um, no machine clients from other distros or other operating systems want to connect to this pop machine here and control it. So I'm not going to do the service part of it. I'm going to use the no machine, the client part, to connect to my um, no machine server running on my Fedora my Fedora installation on a different machine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pin it to Dash. Okay, here it is right here. Okay, so we're pretty much all squared away and ready to use it then. I'm going to go ahead and pop this closed here. Get some extra space. Okay, so one thing I... Let, let's see here. I want to also at this point see if we can launch it from the from the terminal. Now, if the end, if the uh, no machine binary is on the path, and I don't know if it already was automatically installed, then I should just be able to use a certain keyword. If the binary is on the path, then I can use a certain keyword. If it's not, then I'm going to have to use the absolute path. So I'm not sure if it's on the path variable or not. Usually, I don't use the terminal to uh, launch it. I just launch it from the GUI. So let's see what the commands are. Actually, I think... Um, This right here is the um, the keyword. If it's on the path, this will work here. NX client. Okay, let's see what happens. NX client. Let's see if it's on the path. If the a new machine uh, binary is on the, on the path variable, then this should launch it. And it's not on the path. Doesn't seem like. Okay, okay let's try the um, let's try the absolute path then. So come up here, here's the absolute path, and we'll just copy that there. You can see the path here, right? Here's the full path here. Let's see if I can launch it from here, from the home from the uh, the home directory, without having to actually always CD into here and run it that way. Okay, neither of these are working. I'm not sure exactly why they didn't launch. It's possible I didn't get good information from the uh, the AI there. 
So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, forego all that for the moment. I can look into that later. Like I said, I usually just use it. I use it use it this way here from the GUI. Okay, so I don't. You know, you, you can go through some of these um, setup screens here. I've been over them. I don't really need to, to deal with these dialog boxes at this point. Okay, so you saw there it scanned my my network to look for other no machine servers that are running on my network, and it found that the Fedora that's running on my other machine. Okay. Now you could right click it and edit the connection, the name, and everything here. Actually, I should just do that anyway. You should. I, I like to have it like this. The capital letter of the name of the distro. Okay, and then you key in the uh, the IP address of where Fedora is running on your no, on your local network here, and it's running at this address here on that port. That's where there's the no machine server is running on this port over here. Okay, so we're all ready to connect from this no machine client to this uh, no machine server here running on Fedora okay I think we're all staged up here so yeah that was a right click and then you can edit the connection there and get info here and just start it there I think if you um just double click it it'll be the same thing okay click minimize that maximize that I've seen this before this is good I usually just give this the I just skim over that really quick. I feel like I'm I'm pretty good at this point. I don't have to worry about all these uh, all this authenticity of the of the host. So I usually just click on on that OK, and then I have to log into my Fedora, my Fedora um, my Fedora Linux. Okay, so that's my username, and there's my password that I would normally key in to log into my Fedora. I like to say save the password usually. And always log in using this method on that server. Okay, I think we're all staged up here. So once you've got this all squared away here, log in, save the password, always log in this method. That's the way I like to set it up. Click OK. Let's see if it connects to the Fedora or not. Okay, looks like we're, we're there. I don't need to have all these other screens here and know how to deal with um, setting up the screen here. Go ahead and bug all those out here. You can play with the screen resolution. There's a hot corner, I do believe. Okay. I'm on my Fedora desktop here. Great. Yep. And everything works. Let's see if I can open a terminal. So everything's um, responsive and everything's active. Okay, good. I'm able to do some stuff here. Okay, yeah. Everything works. Nothing's frozen. I don't have to worry about hardware acceleration, uh, turning it off or turning off uh, encoding, decoding, anything like that. We're all good. We're all good to go here. We're uh, no machine into the um, remote desktop into the Fedora installation here. See, there's the machine. I have to figure out if that's the client or the server. But either way, we're logged into the Fedora here. Just to prove it even more. Get a little neo fetch going here. Okay, there you go. Now this takes a I don't know why this takes uh, usually a few minutes to um, to populate all the details here, but you can, you can see there. You know, we're definitely into a Fedora. We've remoted into the Fedora Linux. Okay, so that's good. Go ahead and bug out of there. And that's it. There's a hot corner here. I do believe. Yeah, there's a hot corner here. Right. So if you hot corner that, you can come over here and kind of set up things here usually I just like display I usually I just only to deal with the display in case the it's not displaying properly this looks pretty good to me left to right looks good to my liking up and down looks pretty good yeah I like that you can probably go in there and make it full screen so where it hides the pop that's running underneath but you can always play with the hot corner here you can see I changed that name, otherwise it would have said small Fedora than the big Fedora or whatever. But yeah, we're no machined into the Fedora here. And I like the way that looks. Again, deal with the hot corner here. That's how you control things. Okay? So we'll minimize out of there, go back to our pop here. And you have to have 
I don't know if you have to have the server running here. Certainly we're dealing with the, the client part here. So this is how you manage this. And this takes us actually to, to the Fedora here. This is the server running on the Fedora here. Anyway, you have to get used to um, the fact that there's two... It, it installs two, uh, you know, I don't know, versions or whatever, two different services here. One's a local service to client. From So if you want to go from somewhere to somewhere else, you start here. And then if you want other people's... If, uh, other... Um, other uh, machines to remote in here you deal with the server here so client and server okay you have to look into how to launch it from the terminal like I said I usually just use the GUI here the GUI is usually uh, plan A for me and plan and uh, launching from the terminal is uh, plan B because um, you have to keep the terminal window open always running the process and it has they have to live in tandem and you're always having to dedicate at least one terminal window and a tab to running that process. It's good in case you have um, launch or usage issues with no machine to come over and, and try to launch it from the terminal to see if there's any output to try to debug launch or usage issues. Otherwise, I would say uh, command line is com the command line interface method would be plan B and the GUI method is plan A. That's the way I like to do it. Okay? So we'll go back to our NeoFetch here. And um, yeah, okay, so that was how to install No Machine 8.11 on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, so I am Paul, and I am the uh, lead research technician here at the How to Linux Research Labs. And I'm also the administrator of the Pop OS Linux Facebook group on, on Facebook. And um, until my next, and I thank, I want to thank you for uh, subscribing and watching, and I look forward to your comments and feedback. And until my my next video, a happy Linuxing.